Hey guys, Michael for Civil DG, bringing you some passing tips that you can add to make you a better passer. Let's get started with tip number one, and this is better pocket presence. So I'm just going to call any play here, and we're going to go against this dollar DB fire too. This is a pretty meta defense, and I'm going to show you what happens if I just do not press anything. If I just leave the controller as is, just watch how far back Tom Brady goes in the pocket. So again, I'm not. I'm just. I'm just hiking the ball, and just watch him drop back. See how he drops back to the 40-yard line? That's a 10-yard drop back from where the ball is snapped. And that is because I am not pressing anything to cancel the drop back. So versus blitzes, guys, that are coming off the edge, really versus any type of defense, we're going to want to step up in the pocket. What this will do is it will make sacks, if we do take a sack, be less of a penalty for us and it will give us more time to throw the ball so right here i'm going to spam the left trigger and you see how much more time i have and i can also even take off the quarterback that is something that i could not do if i let my quarterback drop back an additional five or ten years so i'm, I'm just really just blocking the running back here hiking the ball i'm pressing the left trigger and i can just take off all day long with this but what you have to do guys is once you hike the ball your first thought process should be stepping up in the pocket, number one. And number two, pressing the left trigger to cancel this drop back so your quarterback does not start 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage when you hike the ball. Again, stepping up, boom. And I'm actually going to throw a receiver right here for an open player. So that is the first tip, guys. Use the left trigger and think that when you hike the ball, your first step should be up. If you can do those two things, you're going to have way better pocket. You're going to have way more time. You're going to add the QB scramble to your arsenal. And these blitzes that are coming off the edges, like Dollar, for example, will have way less success versus your offense. The second tip here is going to be the importance of highballing passes. In Madden 23, highballing is such a good thing to do for pretty much any type of pass. This is for a plethora of reasons. Number one that I'm going to show you right here. If you high ball flat passes, you can get a really good run after catch or rack animation the majority of the time. So right here, when I throw this flat to AJ Dillon, you see how he gets the ball like up on his shoulder and he keeps running? That is the best rack animation in the game, and that is only possible if you high ball your flat. So I'm going to high ball here again. And as you can see, he gets that good rack, keeps running, and it's a nice, easy gain. We are turning that tail route into 10 yards if they do not hard flat on the field. Another thing I wanted to mention too with high balling flats, guys, is if you do not high ball them, there is a great chance that the ball will go off the player's back, off their helmet, they will drop it, etc. And that will never happen if you high ball your flats. So let's get into our second reason here why we like to high ball passes. And that is because if we have a one on one situation where we have like maybe half a step, that high ball will completely eliminate any chance that the defender can play the pass. What I mean by that is look at this AJ Dillon wheel right here once I snap the ball. I'm going to high ball this. And you see now how the linebacker has zero chance to play that pass. And that's a regular bullet pass. There is a chance that that linebacker makes a play on the ball. I'll show it to you guys here one more time. And again, we are just creating a pass where it is either my guy gets it or no one gets it. See, AJ Dillon right there, breaks tile, takes for six. But because I'm doing a high ball bullet pass instead of a regular bullet pass, we go from maybe that ball being a pick to it being a big game where only my receiver can get it. The second part to the importance of hash marks is knowing what routes to get open based on what side of the field are they on. I'm going to give you an example here with Flood versus Cover 3. And when you hike this ball, you're going to see that this corner is going to get underneath the third every single time for a great dot. I will show it to you again. The only reason why this is working is because this corner is on the short side of the field. Boom. If it's in a great pocket for a big play, every single time. Now I'm going to flip this and watch, again, same play, no changes are made, just watch how this corner route by C.D. Lamb will now get bagged. Boom, I throw it, and, and there is like nowhere to throw the ball. I'll show it to you one more time. But again, because I know this corner route gets open on the short side of the field versus the wide side of the field, I will never call this play from this side of the field because I'm on the left hash mark. It gets KO'd, it's never open. But again, if I'm on the short side of the field, just hiking the ball, no changes are made, it's open every single time. So knowing what hash mark you are on and knowing how your plays will work, basically they are on the short side of the field or the white side of the field, will be a great component to add to your game. Our fourth tip here is having an order of progressions before you snap the ball. 
and people do not do this enough no matter skill level. And what I mean by this is I'm just going to call verts here versus cover three. I'm going to motion out verts and just call it. But I need to know pre-play what my reads are and in what order. So my first read here versus cover three is going to be this wheel on a snap throw. If it's open, I'm going to throw it and it's all good. If that isn't open, I need to know what my secondary is going to be pre-play. And, and for me, that's going to be this tight end wheel. That is what I'm going to be looking at if this first read is covered. If both people are covered, then I'm going to the crosser. So right here, I see that my first read is indeed open, and I'm going to throw it, and it's a laser. If that was hypothetically covered, then not a problem. I'm, my eyes are going to immediately look to my second read. So let's say that's covered. Boom. I'm going to hit my second read. If both of them are covered, that's not a problem, but then I need to go to my third read. So I'm thinking, let's say hypothetically, wheels covered, tight ends covered, boom, 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 and I'm going right here for my third read. That is an order of progressions that I have whenever I play, no matter the play call versus no matter the defense, and something that you need to add to your game. So if you get bagged or if your first round gets bagged, second round gets bagged, you have a game plan going in, and once you get more comfortable with this idea, these reads will go by quicker, and it will help improve your game, and you can just start lasering your opponent's defense. If you guys enjoyed that video or found something that you can add to improve your passing game, consider checking out Civil GG, where we offer full-level schemes used at the highest level of Madden. Link is in the description, and use code GG for 20% off your next order.